There were a lot of surprises in 2020, but as far as watches go, for me, this is one of the big ones. I know a lot of people made a big deal out of the blue Tudor Black Bay, but come on, it's not like Rolex has never made a blue watch before. Where's this 42mm Aragon Divemaster? This is more like cats and dogs living together, or hell is frozen over kind of news. It just doesn't happen. If you don't know anything about Aragon, you probably don't know what the big deal with this is. You're looking at this and thinking it's just a standard diver. Which it is, and that's kind of the big news. You see, Aragon's been around for a long time. They used to be called Android watches, and that was before Android was ever a glint in Google's eye. So they're kind of the granddaddy of micro brands, and they've amassed quite a cult following over the years. They are generally known for three things. Value, vibrant designs, and pretty large watches. The Divemaster line is probably their most popular, and it usually comes in a choice of either 45 or 50 millimeters. So, like I said, large watches. They have some great designs, so for years people have been asking and sometimes begging for a smaller version. But after a while people kind of gave up, and they figured they never would. So it was quite a surprise this year when they actually did. As soon as I heard about this one, I checked it out, and I was curious enough to order one. And in true Aragon fashion, you are getting a lot of bang for your buck here. Right now, the non-bracelet version is priced at $139, and it comes with a Seiko NH36A movement, sapphire crystal, and the surprising bit, a ceramic bezel, which is pretty crazy at that price. Now, before we begin, I want to mention that Dave over at Just The Watch also got one of these. And we're going to be releasing our reviews right about the same time. So after you finish here, make sure you go check out Dave's take on this one. But for now, let's just get to it and see what they were able to come up with. So we are talking 42 millimeters wide without and 45 millimeters with the crown. Combine that with a lug to lug of 48 and you have a nice comfortable platform, even if you have a wrist just under seven inches. However, in true Aragon fashion, they had to leave it a little tall for a 200 meter diver. And here, total thickness is 14 and a quarter, which is a little tall, but at least it's better than the 17 millimeters of the last one I looked at. Along the same lines, this thing is solid with a capital S, weighing in at 113 grams on its lightweight rubber strap, which means this thing is really built like a tank. It's not so heavy that it's ever gonna be a problem, but it can feel a little top heavy at times. The bracelet version should balance that out a bit, but that is gonna add more weight. The case design itself isn't anything fancy or intricate. Everything is brushed and it basically acts as a frame to hold the dial with these shorter lugs coming out. It's pretty much a straight tool watch look. The finishing itself is pretty good and surprisingly smooth at this price. Even on the bottom of the case, there aren't any sharp edges. A lot of people don't like an exhibition case back, but this one is pretty well made. And as usual, it is complete with all the particulars. The movement underneath has a standard finish, so nothing really impressive there, but the blue custom rotor is a nice touch. So just as the front of the watch, there's nothing here really special, but it is very well made. Although I am curious how much thinner they could make this with a closed case back. At the three, we have a signed screw down crown, and it is a bit on the smaller side, both in terms of height and width, which makes it a bit more difficult to unscrew and use, although it does keep it from interfering with your wrist. Now onto the bezel. The bezel itself isn't very wide or tall, so it pretty much conforms to the dimensions of the case, and that means there's not a lot of surface area to grab onto. However, the coin edge on that bezel helps out with what's there to give you a decent grip. Now, the resistance as you turn it is a bit heavier than I'd like, but once you get past that, the action itself is pretty good, as it has a great click and no backplay. Now, the important thing is the ceramic insert, and here it is a black ceramic with loomed white markers. It's more of a glossy black ceramic, so it is gonna attract a lot of fingerprints, yet should be fairly scratch resistant, and I think it looks really good paired with a dark blue dial. Now, rounding out the specs, we have a 20 millimeter lug width and a flat sapphire with AR coating. Aragon has a number of different colorways for the Divemaster, and they do range from mild all the way to wild. 
And I do want to point out that the bracelet version has a slightly different dial design, where it has a 12 right at the top. Now, this version is a dark blue sunburst, and it's almost like a navy blue. The dial design is a mixture of applied dots and applied dashes. The indices have a slight amount of depth to them, and they all have a metallic frame that is then filled with white loom. Beyond the indices, we have a flat chapter ring, which is complete with minute indicators. So the overall design is a bit subby-like, but thankfully the hands aren't. You have a short metallic, uh, pointy thing for the arrow, long vibrant orange minute hand, and a very reflective red arrow as the second hand. In some ways they kind of clash with each other, and they are a bit narrower than I would like, but this handset has become a staple of the Dive Master line. And as a whole, I think they look great with the dial, and they easily stand out, not only from the dial, but each other as well, which makes reading the watch rather easy. Now, on the dial itself, you have quite a bit of text. At the top, there's a rather large applied logo, which you're either going to love or hate based on the styling. Personally, I like the way it looks, I just wish it was a little bit smaller. While on the bottom, you have your standard automatic and water resistance text. Although, I don't think you need the professional here, as it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, professional what? So it takes up space and adds some unnecessary clutter. Then at the very bottom, we have the Japanese movement text. Normally, I don't think you need this, and especially if you're marketing this towards watch enthusiasts, but at this price, it is sometimes nice to know you are getting a decent movement, rather than some unknown off-brand one. At the three, we have a rather large day-date display, and this breaks up the flow quite a bit. Although, to be fair, that happens with pretty much every day-date. I think this also shows that the Dive Master line was originally set up to be a competitor for the SKX, albeit one with a bit more vibrant flair, which is kind of fitting considering they are based out of South Florida. So I'm being a bit nitpicky here with all the little things, but at this price it is pretty hard to go wrong. And all in all, it's a pretty good design with a lot of vibrant presence. So on to the loom, and unfortunately this is one point where the Dive Master falls a little flat. Now, they decided to go with a dual color setup here. Dial and hands are green, while the ceramic bezel is blue. So, kind of a nice extra touch there as well. And because of all those extra touches, I kind of had some high hopes here when it came to the loom. Yet, in my comparison test, the dial here is the first to fade out, and way before the Seiko Turtle. Although the bezel, it actually goes on for quite a while. Now, the bezel is not very useful without the hands, but it does show that they put some effort into this. Now, as a whole, it's subpar just because you can't do anything without the hands or the dial. And that is kind of disappointing as the rest of the watch is rather solid. So if they could get the dial and the hands up to the same level as that bezel, I think it would go a long way. So as far as the movement, we have your standard Seiko NH36A, which is the day-date version of the NH35A, as well as a staple among affordable watches. It's got a standard beat rate, 40 shower power reserve, hacking, and hand winding, which at this price, it's pretty much the best you can hope for. And this one was running about plus eight seconds a day. Now, accuracy is always luck of the draw, but not bad here. Now, as for the strap, well, I was actually surprised at how much I like this one. This is actually one of the best rubber straps I've run across. It has a very smooth, soft outer texture and stitching on the sides giving it almost a pseudo leather look. There is a small break-in period with this one, but it's pretty flexible from the get-go, and overall pretty comfortable on my 7-inch wrist. It's also rather long. I think I was on the third or fourth hole from the beginning, and there was about five or six more to go, so it should fit a variety of wrist sizes. I wish it tapered a little bit more, and it's not very breathable, so in the summer I know it's going to get rather sweaty. But as rubber straps go, I think this one is an A+. Now, if you're looking for comparable watches in this price range, you're pretty much going to look at the Orient Mako and Rays. Those have a bracelet, but it's not a great one. And they might have a little bit better loom, but they're not going to have sapphire or ceramic. So I think there is a lot of value here. The 42mm Dive Master is an impressive watch for not a lot of money. At this price, there's always going to be some give and take, and you have a little bit of that here, but as a whole, it's pretty rock solid. 
If the loom had been better, this would have been a home run. And this would have been my new go-to watch to recommend for someone's first automatic diver. And even as it is, it's still one I'd probably recommend, as you are getting a ton for your money here. And with that sapphire crystal and the ceramic bezel, it should continue looking good as time goes by. Anyway, that's my take on the Aragon 42mm Dive Master. But let me know your thoughts down below, or if you can think of any other dive watches that could challenge us for value. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.